Um, okay, so AEW just uh, was yesterday the one year anniversary of Dynamite. Yeah, the first Dynamite. Yeah. How would you grade the year uh, for them? I think there's different ways to sort of critique, um, but I mean, from from a for, I mean from what they delivered to the station, I think you I think it's like a major success. Uh, and for me, rating spices. Yeah, for me the, the, the um like whether or not you like sort of the style or the shows, I think the shows are still. I would say more often than not, I feel. The energy it feels kind of hot, and it's been compared to you know, and and you know, Mike was there to, to Nitro when 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 they went live and stuff, and so I still get jazzed about that. Um, but one year in, I don't feel like I, I it, like it doesn't feel as new, but I don't feel like it's 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 an old show or or anything. I still feel like sort of the newness to that TV show. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I, I mean, the ratings have, have certainly been impressive especially the ratings in the demo. Um, I, I tell Dave often on this, when it comes to AEW, my feelings on the company lie somewhere between Jim Cornette and Dave Meltzer. <laughs> I, I feel I, I'm kind of in the middle on it. I, on the surface, it's, it's great to have this alternative product. So many more jobs for people in the industry, the bargaining leverage that it provides to people in the industry. I, I look at, at some of the numbers and, and like the one that it really impresses me is that 1.59 per home that Dave brought up here, uh, viewers per home that we've seen recently, which David, it, it tells me that, that, that they're watching with their wives or they're watching with their kids. Um, and while I wouldn't Girlfriend. totally san girlfriends, I wouldn't totally sanitize the product. And I'm certainly not opposed to the, to the use of blood and weapons. But I really think in looking at that 1.59 number, the conclusion I draw is that maybe they need to tone down the blood and weapons a little bit. Um, That's what got them there. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that... that, that, that they, uh, they have to be... You're right. They have to be different. You're right. The, the, thing, the thing is, is that, that the one thing that... The, the one thing that if I was going to make a criticism is I would lessen the stunts because number one... You're playing with death, and it, and it scares me sometimes. Um, and also because you do so many of them, it's like I would I would do you know if I would do few I would do like that that Cody Cage thing which he'll never do again. I would have played that thing up so big, over and over. And they do put it you know in clips all the time, but it's like you do a few of them, put them in clips, um, like you do your stadium stampede, which for what it was I thought was like absolutely incredible. But like when Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara were on that pay per view in the whatever it was the third or fourth match on the show, and they did that stunt, you know, I mean it turned out tragic. But the point is, is that that was like two minutes into the match stunt. It was like that was, you know, and I know Matt Hardy's crazy, and that's how he got over. And Sammy's, you know, trying to he's a young guy trying to get over. But you know that you know I I I felt that that. Was was almost like watching that. It's like it's a wake up call, you know. It's like, you know, between that and like Darby, who wants to do anything. And granted, it helped get him over. But those guys, Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen, will in time get over because they're very good and unique at what they do. And if it's you know, if it's one spot at the end of a pay per view, at the end of the feud, yeah, it's two minutes into a match where you're going to do two or three more. You know, just do the one, right? I mean. I, 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 that, that would be, I guess my, you know, there's other criticisms you can do, but that, that's, that's one. But I think, um, you know, going back a year, they proved a lot of people wrong, certainly in WWE. Um, I found, um, you know, Mike, Mike, you didn't hear the, the Levesque thing, did you? The press conference? Yeah. The press conference clip when I asked Levesque about the, the moving to Tuesday or moving, moving off of Wednesday. I, I read a transcript. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, he said what I expected him to say, you know, but I just found it really telling that, you know, now just a couple of weeks. So we've basically proven that, you know, that your own product, especially in 18 to 49, you know, you're going to be up 30% getting away from them and you won't get away from them. Um, you know, and, and 
I just thought that it's just like, okay, I mean, we know, but it's just like, you know, how do you, you know, I mean, I mean, I know what it is. And, and, and from USA, I can get it too. You know, like, right. Like, it's, Cause it's, 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 it's both USA and, and WWE that are in this together and yeah. they feel like that's their best way to fight the battle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll sacrifice this brand, which pays, which we, which we get a lot less money from than the other two from the idea that, that, you know, like, and uh, you know, the perfect example is that variety article this week. Uh, did you see the variety article on, on, on AEW a couple of days ago? I saw the, the Variety one a week ago, and I know that they did another one on AEW okay, so um, WWE, this, WWE. this week, but I, have, I didn't, I didn't oh, okay. read it. No. So, so the AEW one, which, which it was a one-year anniversary, and it basically has a chart, and it has their big thing in the chart is the average viewers, not even demo, average viewers, and it's got Raw, SmackDown, you know, AEW, and NXT, and so they beat NXT. But you know, if you just look at average viewers, AEW is way behind Raw and SmackDown. So you look at that and you, the story kind of is, is that after one year, you know, they've held steady and this and that. Um, but you're just looking at average viewers. It's like, well, you know, like, oh, they're doing great for a number two company. But you're way number two, you know, like Raw and SmackDown numbers. But the whole thing is, is that like, it doesn't look at how, you know, they're artificially kept down 20, 25% by having the opposition and how, hey, you know, they've held you know, held together and during the pandemic so much and the trajectory of all the different shows, it's just, and so it's kind of like when it comes to that article, which was a pro AEW article, it actually, because what WWE did is they very much look like, oh, you know, like, yeah, they're maybe doing good from number two, but they're not even close rather than look at the, you know, the, 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 the positives of, you know, the younger audience, more people per home watching, things like that which I guess, you know, you would have to look way more in depth to see that if you're just a, a reporter and you're doing a story and you're, you're just going to look at total viewers, you know, whatever, because that's what you do a lot of the time. It's like, it's, it's interesting, but it's, it's like, um, it, it, you know, so, so for WWE, that's a good perception of keeping them down because it doesn't look like they're close to raw, which they're not. It doesn't look like they're close to SmackDown, even though for real, they're probably doing better than SmackDown. I mean, realistically, if you put you put you put SmackDown and FS1 in that same time slot on Friday, eight to ten, I expect that AEW did most weeks. Even 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 with NXT, you take NXT out and you put SmackDown every Friday and FS1, AEW unopposed every Wednesday on um, on TNT. I would I'd, be, I'd bet anyone that um, AEW wins most weeks. When it comes to moving to Tuesday, I could see if their fear is that they may get uh, th- their ratings may increase for a short amount of time, but with so much wrestling on TV, NXT could clearly become the fourth most important show of the week. And when you're the fourth sure most, but but at least with Wednesday night. Wednesday night is now wrestling night. If you take away the Wednesday night from NXT, how how long would it take for their audience to sort of go back to what it was uh, head-to-head with AEW only because people would treat it as the fourth most important show of the week versus on at least on Wednesday night, we've, we've been in doctrine to wrestling night, and now we're just going to sit on our couch in the evening and, and watch this stuff because we're sort of involved in this you know in this in in this wednesday night wrestling war i i I don't uh, i think they'd still be well ahead yeah and i don't look would nxt they wouldn't even be on usa if it wasn't for aew i don't think would they not a chance not a chance so i mean doesn't that just tell you everything that you need to know about the, the the situation and the head-to-head battle it's there for a reason. 